Hello again. This is Rob Wagoner, and today I want to spend some time answering the question, do you really need System Center Virtual Machine Manager to create a highly available environment? And the answer is no. What I'd like to show you today is Hyper-V Manager, Failover Cluster Manager, and then why you're going to want to add System Center Virtual Machine Manager to your environment. But I want to make it clear that live migration and high availability do not require System Center Virtual Machine Manager. So the first thing I want to do is show you Hyper-V Manager. Hyper-V Manager is included in Windows Server Standard Edition, Enterprise Edition, and Data Center Edition. And Hyper-V Manager lets us manage the virtual machines in our environment. Now, as you can see, I have Hyper-V Manager up right now. And I'm looking at my three Hyper-V servers, H1, C3, and C2. H1 is an Intel processor. C2 and C3 are AMD processors. And in a few minutes, I'll show you why that matters. If I'm looking for a specific virtual machine, I can look through all three of my Hyper-V hosts separately, looking for the machine I'm looking for. I'm actually looking for this machine right here. But as you can see, I have to go through each host until I find it. Once I find my virtual machine, I'm able to connect to it right here from Hyper-V Manager and manage that console. As you can see, the expected resolution is larger than my current screen. But from right here, I can connect to the console of that virtual machine and manage the contents of that virtual machine if I choose. Or from here, I can turn it off. I can shut it down. The difference being turn it off, it's like physically pulling the plug. We don't get to do an orderly shutdown. Shutdown gives us the opportunity to do an orderly shutdown. Paused is really great. While it doesn't return any of the memory to the Hyper-V host, it stops all of the CPU. So if for some reason I need to free up processor utilization quickly, and I have an expendable virtual machine, I could quickly just say pause. When I'm ready to give CPU back to that virtual machine, I can easily say resume. And now the virtual machine goes right back to work. But what I've been able to do is free up some processor resources quickly. Again, if you have an expendable virtual machine, and then quickly return that state. I also have the ability to save. So save, think of that like a hibernate, where it's actually going to save that memory footprint to disk right where it is now. Or I could do a reset and fully reset the virtual machine, force a reboot. All of this I could do on a virtual machine by virtual machine basis and a host by host basis. So this is how I can manage my virtual machine. Now as I want to move into a high availability environment, that's where we can use Failover Cluster Manager. What Failover Cluster Manager does is lets us manage that high availability and live migration piece. Failover Cluster Manager ships with Windows Server Enterprise Edition and Data Center Edition. Notice that I didn't say it shipped with Standard Edition. It does not ship with Standard Edition because Standard Edition doesn't support clustering from a Hyper-V host perspective. Now you can add the Remote Server Administration Toolkit, which includes Failover Cluster Manager, to your Windows Server standard installs, your Windows 7, and even your Windows Vista installs so that you can do remote management of your failover clusters from those desktops. The Remote Server Administration Toolkit is a free download off Microsoft.com, and my blog has included a link to that. With Failover Cluster Manager, I can now see all of my virtual machines up and running, and a lot of the names, as you can see, are prefaced with SCVMM because a lot of them are managed by SCVMM. And when you put a virtual machine in the cluster via SCVMM, it prefaces its name with SCVMM. But I could quickly scroll through here and find all my virtual machines, even manage this virtual machine here. One of the other things I can do here, since I'm in a cluster for high availability, I can initiate a live migration with Failover Cluster Manager. Again, Failover Cluster Manager is included with Windows Server Enterprise and Data Center and can be added to Windows Server Standard and the client OSs. Here I could do a live migration to Node H1. Remember earlier when I said Node H1 was an Intel-based chip and C2 and C3 were AMD-based chips? So I'm moving from C2 to H1. We have this, what I call, pre-flight check. So before the live migration, it will check to make sure that I really can migrate to that host. And as you can see, it throws the error that says we can't migrate to an Intel chip from an AMD chip. But I can go back here, and I can say live migrate now to my C3 node, which I know is an AMD chip. And then the live migration will work. And as you see from Failover Cluster Manager, while we're migrating, I can see right here in status that I'm migrating. While it's making the migration, notice that we're on C2, we'll come back and it'll be on C3. 
I can also view my nodes. What are my nodes in my cluster? Again, it'll list all three and show me that they're up. I'm going to move down here to storage for just a minute. Storage gives me the ability to view my clustered storage. So my highly available storage, my shared storage. From right here, because I have a three node cluster, I can have a disk witness. I can also have clustered shared volumes and normal storage. So what's the difference? In normal shared volumes, I have a drive letter and it's assigned to a particular host. So H1 is the only host in my cluster that can see this particular volume and it has a drive letter of S. Clustered shared volumes, on the other hand, don't have drive letters, they work off mount points. So from any of my Hyper-V hosts, I can move to the directory cluster storage, volume 3, and see that volume. All three hosts have visibility into that same share. I have an owner, which is C2. C2 is responsible for making sure that share is properly managed and functional, but all three hosts have visibility into that particular share. I also have my cluster shared volumes piece here, again, where I can drill into these cluster shared volumes. Simply put, Failover Cluster Manager lets me manage my high availability of my virtual machines. And as you can see, now our virtual machine is running on C3. So the live migration succeeded. So I've shown you Hyper-V Manager and Failover Cluster Manager, again, included with the Windows Server OS. Let's move now to System Center Virtual Machine Manager. System Center Virtual Machine Manager brings a lot of additional value as well and replaces some of the need for Hyper-V Manager and Failover Cluster Manager. In Virtual Machine Manager, I have the ability to look at all of my virtualization hosts, all of my hypervisors, and I can look at all of my hosts, even my ESX host. So my environment has three Hyper-V hosts and one VMware server. V Virtual Machine Manager can manage Hyper-V and VMware servers. So right here I can see how each of my hosts are performing. Notice the yellow triangle here on WHC. This is my Hyper-V host. I've intentionally overcommitted it, so I have more virtual machines in that cluster than that cluster can actually deliver on if I lose one of my Hyper-V hosts. So the way I can configure this is to make sure that I always have enough capacity in the event I lose a host to continue to run my workloads. Pro Tips gives me the ability to dynamically tune my environment to make sure I have the best performance possible. This could be something like if one particular host gets too much of a workload and starts to become overloaded, pro tips could suggest and then even take action and live migrate a virtual machine from one host to another host to say a host that has some additional capacity so we can continue to provide optimum performance. I can also look at the networks assigned to my cluster and then all of the storage available to this cluster. From a virtual machine perspective, remember how we had to find that one virtual machine and we had to move from host to host to host? Here in Virtual Machine Manager, I can get a view of all of my virtual machines, look at which hosts they're running on, scroll down and look at all of them, notice the ESX1 host. This is my VMware host. So I can see all of my virtual machines and their state. I can sort these by name, by running status, you choose. I also have the ability to filter by status. So here, I can look at just my running virtual machines, again, across all of my hosts, or all of my stopped virtual machines, and again, see all of my hosts. I can easily clear those filters and go right back to viewing the whole thing. So Virtual Machine Manager gives me the ability to look at all of my virtual machines supporting my environment. Virtual Machine Manager also gives us this library server. Library server is an incredibly powerful solution because it lets me manage my ISO files for my standard builds. It also lets me create standard templates or a standard image for my environment. The first thing we can view with the library overview is how many hosts, how many virtual machines, what's the status of my library resources. I can then drill into my library servers and it can show me all of the resources. As I continue to filter down, I actually have ISOs for a number of different products all stored here on my library server. So if I need any of these resources, I quickly have all the install bits right here so I can build a virtual machine. The other thing it lets me do is create and store these virtual machines. So let me show you templates. Templates are again what we would view as a standard disk image. I have a Windows 7 Enterprise Edition 64-bit install standard image set up for my environment already. 
So if I want to deploy another Win7 64-bit image, I can quickly say create a new virtual machine based off this template. So the template was a Win7 64-bit machine that I created, installed all the patches, installed my antivirus, installed any other business applications I need. So now I can quickly deploy another Win7 image based on a predefined hardware footprint because I know what this virtual machine needs. Notice that this only requires 512 meg of memory. Windows 7 in a virtual environment starts up and runs just great in 512 meg of memory. And then leveraging dynamic memory, what I've done is said this virtual machine can have, have up to 2 gig of virtual memory if it needs it. If it doesn't, don't allocate it. Or if we allocate it and we need it back, we also have the ability to recover that. My virtual disk drive, I can continue through this process of deploying this template. I can put a new machine name here if I want, set up my admin password, embed any product key. I can now choose a destination for this virtual machine. And it will look across my hosts. And as you can see, none of my hosts have any gold stars. When I look at why, it says this particular cluster is overcommitted. So it suggests that I not deploy the virtual machine to the cluster, but I still can anyway. And I'll go ahead and put it on a clustered shared volume, 7. Enable any networks. I have my virtual machine network, so make sure this virtual machine can see it. Any additional properties, like do I always want it to start, or do I want a safe state? So notice in this virtual machine configuration, I can go from a standard Windows 7 image all the way to deploying in my cluster, and even tell it once it's deployed, go ahead and start up that virtual machine and do that whole creation process right here. Now, the other thing Virtual Machine Manager gives us is this concept of jobs. Everything in Virtual Machine Manager is done by particular jobs so we can go back and track it. This particular job we just created, create a new virtual machine. So it's going to deploy this virtual machine out to the hypervisor host that I've designated. And as you can see, what it'll do is deploy the file make any property changes to the virtual machine. I could have actually automatically had it install into my domain if I chose. Make sure the VM components are installed. Do any additional customization I'd asked for. So doing any sysprep work, joining it to the domain would happen here. At the end, after it does all the customizations, it shuts it down. And because the last thing I asked it to do was make sure that machine was started, it now does a fresh start. So after any of those configuration changes, basically we get a reboot here. And then that virtual machine will be available on my host to take advantage of. From an administrative perspective, here's how I set up to manage my ESX server. System Center Virtual Machine Manager 2008R2 manages ESX hosts by way of the vCenter virtual management server. So I have vCenter running in a virtual machine. I point Virtual Machine Manager to vCenter, and then vCenter manages any of the ESX hosts I have. My managed computers. So here are the computers that I'm managing through Virtual Machine Manager. My pro settings. So I can go through and say enable pro all the time and just make suggestions. Or here I can say automatically implement pro tips. So this is how I can get my automatic dynamic resource management. And then back up to the overview. Again, it shows me how my resources are being used. Let's move back over now and find this virtual machine that we're deploying. So as you can see, it's showing us we're creating that virtual machine right now. And it shows us where we are in the deployment. Again, I can drill over to the jobs if I want additional detail and granularity in what's going on. So I can actually see how much of that file has been copied. So with that, I wanted to give you a quick overview of what we have available in Virtual Machine Manager and why you'll want to add that to your cluster. The last thing I want to remind you of is the site I have available here as you want to dig into Hyper-V and System Center. I have a redirected URL of hyper-v.rwag.com and it gives you this quick summary of all the different videos I've made around Hyper-V and System Center. Thank you for your time and I hope you have a good day.